Hello, this is Paul Jarzembowski at the USCCB. I'm the Assistant Director for Youth and Young Adult Ministries at the Bishop's Conference, and I'm here with Bishop Frank Caggiano. Bishop Frank Caggiano of the Diocese of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Hi, everybody. Uh, B Bishop Caggiano is, a, uh, is one of the Synod Fathers here at the Synod on Young People, the Faith and Vocational Discernment, and we're just going to take a few minutes to, uh, to just explore a little bit about what's going on this week uh, here in Rome. So, so, Bishop, first of all, I think one of the big questions we want to know is why should we even care that there's a synod going on? Well, I think it's a moment of grace in many ways. Uh, we have 260 bishops from every continent in the world gathered together because they're concerned about young people and young adults, right? And it's a moment when we could learn from one another and with the help of God, perhaps come up with some initiatives that different local churches can actually incarnate in different ways. I mean, consider the world, how diverse it is. We're not all going to do everything the same way, but hopefully we're all rowing in the same direction. But it elevates the importance of youth and young adults for the church, right? They're at the heart of what we do, who we are. So this is their moment to speak up and to be listened to. So when you're in there, mm -hmm. in the Synod Hall, mm -hmm. well, first of all, can you just describe the scene? Like, mm -hmm. For people who have never been to a Synod before, which I would guess is most people. Um, and me. And you. This is my first This is synod. your first time as of a course, Synod. Of course, of course. So it's, what is it? What, what, what is all right, it? it's a large hall <laughs> with about 300 seats. Okay. And the bishops are, we all have our assigned seats, and we all have attendance at every session, <laughs> you know, just to make sure everyone is there. And then there are young people who are there. Mm -hmm. right? They're delegates as well. And then there's the media and then experts and all the rest. So at the front, there's a dais and the Holy Father presides at the general sessions. And then there are some of the officials that help make the synod work. And we have microphones at every place. Oh, okay. So when you do your intervention or you give your talk, you actually do it sitting down right at your place. And I have to tell you, they are very well organized. Great. Yeah. Now, you, now again, the Holy Father, Pope Francis, is, is in the Synod Hall with you. He, Always. He's listening yes. to your sessions. Yes. And Simultaneous then, translation. Okay. So we have the five, I guess it's six principal languages. Mm -hmm. So you can speak in any of those languages, and they have the interpreters that do the simultaneous translation. So everything we do has to be submitted in advance so that it can be pre-translated. Right. What's exciting you, though? And this is your first time. You're mm -hmm. you're a rookie um, mm -hmm. synod father, as mm -hmm. they say. Um, so, what is exciting you, uh, energizing you mm -hmm. about this so far? I mean, we've only been a couple days into it, but mm -hmm. I'm curious, what's mm -hmm. energizing you so far? Uh, you know, it's an interesting question. You know, we are bound by the pontifical seal in the deliberations, and for those who may not know what that really is. In order to create a space where the bishops can speak very frankly and very openly, um, we're bound to secrecy insofar as we cannot speak about what a certain bishop says. Mm -hmm. But we could talk in like general impressions, and that's what your question is really asking. Right. And my sense is, now we're three sessions into it, um, there seems to be a lot of frank discussion. The bishops are really speaking their mind. What impresses me is young people and young adults are finding different challenges in different parts of the world. Mm -hmm. Particularly Asian bishops are speaking very much from the heart about some really human issues that young people are facing, which are a bit different from us, let's say, in the United States. Um, so I'm, I'm very much uh, encouraged by that. And of course, the young people who are there are very energetic. Let's just leave it at that. They are very energetic, and, they, and that energy is, fills the room. So there's, I hear there's about 34 young people mm -hmm. who, amongst the, 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 the delegates, amongst the, the, the observers, the auditors, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 34 of them are under the age of 30. Um, mm -hmm. And so, um, so they feel like, I'm sure you're also talking to them in the breaks, and then maybe yeah. on your way in and out of the hall, mm -hmm. and you're... They're, and they're, are they giving interventions as well, they're speaking? Yes, they are also allowed to do that. So we've had a few, mm -hmm. and I think some more will be coming in the coming weeks. And how is, um, again, how is it to be in this space? Because now you normally have go, you go to bishops' meetings, and mm -hmm. generally it's bishops talking with bishops. So here you have an opportunity to have some young people, the, the topic mm -hmm. of this synod, there with you. 
What is that like? What is that? What, what is? What do they bring to this? Uh, to this gathering? Oh, I th they they bring frankness. They bring honesty. They bring some really s some creative ideas. Um, they're not afraid to speak up about the things they don't understand or even may not agree with. Uh, the Pope is down. When we have breaks, the Pope comes down and mingles. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the young people, um, he makes it his business to find them. Oh, great. So he is interacting with them very informally, which I think is good. That's, that, that should be the priority. Um, I, I only went down once because, to be honest, up with, with the stuff I need to get done. Absolutely. So what are the, some of the topics and themes that, for instance, that, that are coming up, maybe what trend, what's trending or what, do you, what things are you noticing already hearing? You've mentioned the global understanding. You mentioned about mm -hmm. some of the international mm -hmm. things mm -hmm. that, that you may not have been mm -hmm. aware. Um, are there other things that are coming up that, that are, are it's just fascinating for you to hear, um, things that maybe you hadn't heard before? affirming things that you did know, I'm mm -hmm. just curious. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, one of the themes clearly is how to listen, hmm. which is an active, not a passive process. And of course we do it in different ways, but that's really the first portion of this instrumentum laboris, this working document, is to listen. And um, I myself personally have found it to be fascinating to try to listen with a kind of like a docility as to what people are going to be saying. Uh, a lot of people have surprised me by what they've said, which is a confirmation that listening is exactly what we should be doing. So that's one thing, it's listening. Um, and I think we, a lot of it has been the details. What are we listening to? We're listening to people's, young people's, young adults' challenges the issues they face, mm -hmm. their dreams, their hopes, their goals. They themselves have spoken very, very articulately about that. So a lot of what I thought and some of what I heard from the young people of Bridgeport mm -hmm. has been confirmed. Oh, good. There have been some things though that I've not quite seen before or heard before that I thought was, um, you know, has given me pause to reflect. Mm. Um, what do you think, um, in general, you, you, um, you work a lot with young people. Mm -hmm. um, you, were, you've, you are our World Youth Day chaplain. Mm -hmm. you're, uh, you, you advise the National Federation for Catholic Youth Ministry. Mm -hmm. um, you, come, you speak at a lot of events that young people are, are mm -hmm. present at. Why are you engaged with young people? I mean, what, what, what do young people give you in general? You know, not just the ones here at the Synod, but the ones in, that are you know, perhaps uh, online who uh, you see at these events. What, what gives you joy to be able to work with them? That's a question I ask often, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, you know, it's, it, I, I honestly, um, to be perfectly frank, mm -hmm. since I'm basically well-named, <laughs> um, there isn't any great wealth of wisdom that I have shared over the years. But I do think by personality and training, by temperament and culture, I am very comfortable accompanying people. And I think that is what young people really want. Hmm. What they want is someone to walk with them, not just me, but right. anyone, to walk with them. To not necessarily say, you have to get to this point in the journey in order for me to join you. Because I will go wherever I need to go. And I will walk who, who, with whomever wants me to walk with them. And I think that's what kind of resonates with young people. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they're always looking for an answer. Because chances are they already have the answer somewhere inside of them. What I think is they're looking for someone to help them to create a space where they can discover it with someone being their mentor or their guide or just their friend. So. I get a tremendous amount out of accompanying young people and being in the ministry I'm in mm -hmm. because I always am encouraged, right? I'm always more hopeful. And we have problems. Good Lord, do we have problems. Mm -hmm. But when you deal with young people, that's your ministry too, young yes. adults. You always come back with a sense of, you know what? Yeah, we'll get through this. You know, because there's energy, there's commitment, 
There is sober enthusiasm. It's not Pollyanna, it's sober. They realize the challenges they face. There's a, 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 a spirit of directness. They're not afraid to ask certain things, though we who are a bit older. And plus, you gotta talk straight. You gotta tell it like it is. You just gotta say it. It is what it is, right? That's how I was raised. And so, like, why beat around the bush? <laughs> and I think young adults really appreciate that. Yeah. So, the last two questions I have really are if, as people are watching this, um, mm -hmm. there's gonna be different types of people that are watching. Um, one are people who work with young people. Mm -hmm. So our youth and young adult ministers, our campus ministers, and then the young people themselves are watching. Um, so first, what would you say um, that those who work with young people, mm -hmm. what can they do um, going forward? Like what, what would you say mm -hmm. to them mm -hmm. during the Synod month? What, what would I think? What a direct challenge. Okay. I have a direct challenge. All right. Stop with the false choices. Okay. Stop with the false choices. Explain. It's ne what do I mean? You know, there's a group, there's a thinking in the church that it's all about the need to teach what we believe. I absolutely agree. Young people want to be aspiring to something. They will resonate with the call to be great in Jesus Christ. They want to realize their full potential. They're not afraid of knowing what the truth is. They're not afraid of the destination. And we have to tell them clearly, this is what we're about. Mm -hmm. But then there's another school that says, well, no, it's about the journey. It's about accompaniment, as I described it. See, and that's a false choice. It's not either or, it's both. It's walk with someone as they are moving towards somewhere and be clear about that somewhere is Jesus Christ. It's the gospel. It's the image the vision that the Lord gave us. It's the recipe to live life fruitfully, joyfully, to live the truth, aspire to courage and greatness, reach for what the Lord wants, but walk with them as they get there, as you and I have been walked with to get this far. So that's what I mean by false choices. It's like, do we do this or that? No, you do both. And I think in youth ministry and young adult ministry, sometimes we make the mistake of thinking we emphasize one over the other when I believe they're side by side and self-correcting. Because Paul today may need more of the truth, you know, the aspirational reminding of the destination than accompaniment. Tomorrow Paul may wake up and needs more accompaniment than reminding him of the destination, right? Thanks, yeah. yeah. So, and same <laughs> with me. Yeah. So that's the, the, the youth ministers. Yeah. Now what about the young people? What about youth and young adults? What about uh, college students, 20-somethings, uh, 30-somethings, mm -hmm. teenagers? That I, I, and obviously there's multiple messages for all of them, but if you could say what, would, what, should, what should young people be uh, doing, thinking about now, this mm -hmm. month? Well, I think first they, more than anyone else, needs to pray for the success of what's happening here. Mm -hmm. Because I think this is their moment of grace. And there's a preferential option, I think, that is emerging in the church to hear the voices of young people. But my challenge to young people, particularly young adults, mm -hmm. is to take seriously John's admonition to be in the world, but not of the world. Because they need to discern what is it in their contemporary experience, which is different from mine, what is it that truly can live with the destination, and what has to be jettisoned because it will not get you to the destination. There's a lot of good in the modern world, in the contemporary world, yeah. and they are the best people to help us understand what that is. It's like technology. <coughs> technology is a two-edged sword, isn't it? It's an opportunity and it's a challenge. Right. So, as we work our way through the document, whatever is produced is not going to answer every question. Mm -hmm. It's going to give a recipe. But you do the cooking in your local parish, local school, local diocese. So, that discernment of in the world but not of the world, that's where those who are older mm -hmm. need to be very humble and listen to the voice of the young people and young adults and say, okay, tell us, tell us, tell me, what is it that's, that is in the world that's gonna help us to get to heaven and what is not? And then we'll help you walk 
to get there. Wonderful. Well, that's a great note to end on. I know that you actually have to get to the next session. Yes, of my city. next session. Your next yes. session is starting momentarily. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to let you get to that. Um, I want to thank you very much for sharing this. We're going to be here in Rome for the next month to continue to um, uh, learn about, hear what's going on, and, to, and you're gonna, as a synod father, you will help kind of shape and mm -hmm. guide this process. So thank you for that, and uh, we'll keep catching up with you yes, throughout the month. Yes, I look forward to it, Paul. Wonderful. And thank, thank all you. of you this morning. Um, I know it's morning in the United States. It's afternoon here, but we're, uh, we're grateful for you joining us, and uh, we'll see you around. Yeah, God bless. God bless.